There are real terminators in this world. It's an actual computer science term. Inator. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. What it is, what is the purpose of it, and what exactly was the movie named after? Now listen to me very carefully. The official definition of Terminator is to quote unquote bring to an end. It's a word that's used in a variety of different disciplines from genetics to astrophysics to even some software applications. So I'd like to narrow down our focus and look at specifically electronic terminators that are found in computer hardware, the kind that you can touch and feel. And before we get into it, the, the word terminate can be used as a verb that is something slightly different in the computer science world. For example, ethernet and fiber optic cables are quote unquote terminated in order to connect to other cables and devices. That is not exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about Terminator as a noun, as a thing. And as a thing, it's used in many different networks and other digital communication lines. When you get right down to it, it is all about signal integrity. If you have a, a pathway, let's say it's a wire, you have a signal that's sent from one end to reach the destination of the other end. If the signal is allowed to, it will naturally bounce off the end and go back to the beginning and and back and forth and that's where the terminator comes in it prevents distortion or loss caused by signal reflection without terminators it would be chaos they are very helpful and basically say to data on a wire my mission is to protect you you can think of terminators in this sense as sort of like if you think about a recording studio where there's sound absorbing panels on the walls in order to keep the sound crisp. That is sort of what a Terminator does, but with digital data. They come in all shapes and sizes and are mostly found in ethernet networks and computer buses. By the way, all this information, because it's digital, is ones and zeros, but not even ones and zeros. It's just on and off signals. And not even on and off signals. It's just on signals and the lack of signals. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, let's get on to a real example. So you have SCSI, which SCSI stands for Small Computer System Interface. And this is an older set of standards for physically connecting and transferring data between computers and peripheral devices. SCSI chains are where I first heard about terminators for real, and that's because they require one terminator at the end of the chain. This is just one example of a terminator. And there's all kinds of different types of terminators. They can be passive, such as a simple resistor, or active, which is slightly more complicated, which would be something like a voltage regulator. And it gets more complicated than that. There's forced perfect termination, where it locks a signal between two actively regulated voltage levels. Now, why did James Cameron, who wrote the script for The Terminator in 1982, choose the word Terminator? I couldn't find any specific information on why that term was chosen. And when looking for contemporary terms, I found one that, that could be a possible origin. It's an obsolete Ethernet standard that was created in 1982, known as 10 Base 5. It was the first commercially available variant of Ethernet and it needed to be properly terminated at both ends of the bus. So maybe that is where James Cameron heard about the term, but who knows, the term did exist during the time, for real, and it still exists today. You can find it in networks, and the fact is you can't reliably send digital signals across a bus without properly terminating them once read. Why? Because you just can't, okay? Trust me on this. Thanks for watching today's video. I had fun making it. And I hope it helps you understand this particular term in computer science. If you have any other ideas of things you want to know more about, please put them in the comments. I'm happy to look into it. But uh, either way, I'll be back.